And we're back to another episode of Let's Play King's Quest II Romancing the Stones. I'm your host, the RPG Guy. So we got a little bit of information from uh, Jackie Pumpkin here. That's what I'm going to call her. Uh, about, you know, the witch Hagatha and that somebody stole one of her kids that we saw earlier in the, the uh, previous episode. So let's see what else we can find while exploring the wonderful land of Colima. I'm sure we can find all sorts of things. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we will walk to the west. And we are hoping. Oh, keep walking. You have run into an evil enchanter. Get out of here fast before he turns you into something. So that's something in this game is uh, there are some wandering enemies that can hurt harm us. And don't worry, they're all story related. So what we want to do is force kind of a scene to happen here. Just something tiny, nothing major. And if we keep going back and forth, we'll eventually get get it to spawn. There we go. Let's go talk to this uh, little girl here. Interesting outfit, almost like it's from a different fairy tale. Hello, who are you? My name is Graham. What is yours? Possum. That is what my grandma calls me. You she sound like it all around these days. Sounds like a baby golem. I was collecting flowers for her, but now I cannot anymore. Why is that? My basket is missing. I looked everywhere for it. It must be around here somewhere. I will keep my eye out for it. Thank you, Graham. And like usual, whenever we meet a new character, we kind of want to have a conversation. Wondering. Could you tell me anything about this land? You mean Kalima? There is a town to the northeast, and a church not far south of that. Grandma and I live in a house near the beach. Oh boy. You should not enter the swamp to the north. It is said to be influenced by magic. Many have easily lost their way in there, and finding your way out again is difficult. Thank you, Possum. Is there any way at all through this swamp? I do not know, but I did see someone walking out of there not long ago. He was writing something in a book as he walked. Who was that? A monk from the church. You mentioned that your grandma is not well. What ails her? I... I am not sure. But I think it gives her sad dreams. Aww. While she sleeps, sometimes she talks out loud. Sometimes I listen to her. No, do not leave me, she says. At first, I thought she was speaking to me. I would go over to her, but she would not notice me. Then I realized it was a dream. I think she misses the person she talks to in her sleep. And then, there's the scary dreams. You mentioned that your grandma had scary dreams. What are these dreams about? Bats. Bats? Yes, in her sleep, she screams with fright, as if a bat is chasing her, or she's being hurt by one. Then, she'll say something like, Blue light is the bat's true bane, over and over. Blue light? What does she mean? I have asked her this, but she just shakes her head and will not speak of it. Thank you, Possum. Mm. I wish your grandma a swift recovery. Thank you, Graham. I will speak of you to her. And yeah, that's something for us to definitely keep in mind. Let's see if we can locate this little girl's basket. Uh, again, complications can arise if we don't find it relatively quickly. You uh -oh. have run into an evil... It there he is again. Run, Graham! You know, and, and this is one of the places where you can find the basket, give or take. Keep moving along here. Seeing if we get lucky and find that stupid Bosch gate. Wherever it may be. And we would we would notice it right away if we actually saw the darn thing. Let's see, let's start heading back that way. 
though sometimes hunting in in vain in vain can be not helpful. So far, no luck on the basket front. Every time you play this game, it can be, uh, I believe, in a random location. So you just kind of gotta keep kind of as you near the cave. The bat symbol above the entrance starts radiating an ominous black glow. Batman, Batman. Batman. Here comes Jesus. He is coming dressed up as a Batman. Yes, he's Batman. Oh, wait. What do we got here? You peer behind the palm tree. Lo and behold, you have found the little girl's missing basket. Well, hot damn. You take the basket. Sorry. Didn't mean to skip that little bit of dialogue, but we take the basket. The game didn't need to tell me that. I know we have the basket. Now let's go back there because there's a chance she might have taken off. If we don't get back there too quickly. And then we can give it to her. You hand the basket to Possum. Thank you, kind sir. Please take this flower. I'm afraid it's all I have to give you. Cheap bitch! It is more than enough. I noticed that you have picked only yellow flowers. Of course. Is it not customary for one to pick yellow flowers for another who is gravely ill? Certainly it is. I'm sorry to hear about your grandma, Possum. Thank you. Goodbye. And uh, be careful of, of, of wolves and other lichen types. Just in case, little girl. Little red riding hood. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's keep uh, exploring. What could this be? As it's slightly discolored from the ground. You look under the log and discover a clam lying beneath it. You pick it up. Sweet. You open the clam and discover, to your surprise, a dazzling pearl. Sweet. All right, let's keep moving. So again, we're going to continue to kind of explore the rest of the overworld here. We're not going to explore every nook and cranny, but we will explore a good chunk of it for sure. Uh, keeping, I keeping in mind the things that we see. We'll now go this way. We should arrive here. It is a mailbox. This is the first time you have ever set eyes upon one, which isn't surprising. The postal system won't be invented for another few centuries to come. The residents of this land must either possess clairvoyance or just simply be ahead of their time. <laughs> You'll need to walk around the other side of the house. Which is kind of funny because this, this whole scene kind of reminds me of the house in uh, Zork. The first Zork game. Maybe I should pull the Zork games out at some point. It is a. You open the mailbox. Inside, there is, incredibly, a letter addressed to the resident. You decide to leave it in there. A card has been dropped in it also. You read it. Have you been missing church services lately? How long? How long a while since your last confession? There's still time yet to repent your sins before the final hour. Come to the church of Kalima to pray for your own salvation, or just make a donation. Put your faith back into the church and walk the path that has been laid down before you. Hours from dusk till dawn. Just keep that in mind. That is a that is a Easter egg kind of joke. You place the card and close the mailbox. You attempt to open the door, but find it is locked. You think you can hear the sound of labored breathing inside and decide against causing any further disturbance. It's probably in our best interest not to. Let's go ahead and go south. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yep, yep. 
There we go. And then we'll head to the east here. And then, hmm, let me think. You know what? Let's go this way. No, you know what? Debating on my head in my head which set of items to go for first, but it really doesn't matter. We were already kind of going this way. We may as well continue. Right. This large fallen log is all that remains of a once grand tree. Indeed, big Woody it once was. You peer into the depths of the dark hole. Oh my. As luck would have it, you discover a beautiful set of earrings hidden inside. Each one is laced with glittering diamonds and contains a lovely blue sapphire stone in the center. Perhaps someone stashed them here. At any rate, you take them into your possession. Oh my. Let me take a look at this too while we're at it. The diamond and sapphire earrings are very delicate. Each earring has a large sapphire surrounded by glittering diamonds. Sweet. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Oh, you know what? While we're here, we can actually do one other thing. Three gold coins shimmer in a nearby patch of grass. But before you get excited... High in the treetop, a rope is tied to a branch. You notice a thick rope dangling loosely against the trunk of the tree. Upon closer inspection, you see that the rope actually runs away from the tree and into the thick grass on the forest floor. This is obviously a trap. And a trap not meant for animals. This is clearly a trap meant for people. Well, number one, we will not be caught by such simple a trap. And then we will go ahead and grab the coins. As you pick up the gold coins, they suddenly turn dark. Now they resemble ordinary metal. Wait a minute. This isn't gold. It's fool's gold. Oh, my. Let's move. So clearly that's a trap meant to catch greedy people. Maybe there's a greedy person we might be able to do something with. All right. So the other thing we know about is a church. We may as well go check that out and see if we have access to it or not. Go earn that street cred somehow so we can get a bearing of where everything is. The door appears to be barred from the inside. The church must not be open at this time. The church door is made of very thick wood held together by iron bars. Okay, so not much we can really do there. Let's keep moving. And let's go ahead and go back to town. See if we can do something for our little pumpkin friend. We got a greedy bastard who's clearly grabbing things from a pot, from a fountain. What do we normally... What, what is culturally something that people sometimes throw in fountains that a greedy bastard might want? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My point exactly. So let's go ahead and put the coins in the fountain. And then we're going to go... The fool's gold again shines the instant the coins leave your hand. Let's go talk to Numbnuts over here and let him know about the uh, bit of change that we dropped. Three coins in the fountain. What? Let me see. <laughs> like how he gives his accent up when, he's, when money and greed is involved. So he's going to fiddle with that. Let's save us a little child pumpkin and let's get the hell out of here before he realizes we just took his uh his money maker <laughs> and then what we could even do is the baby pumpkin seems a little more settled than it was with the merchant but you sense it still wants to get home oh poor little guy the yellow flower is very pretty but has a sickly smell 
The shiny, beautiful pearl seems to radiate a soft glow. Haven't we haven't looked at these things in a while? We should have looked at the money before we dumped it, but more pressing matters we needed to be attended to. Let's get this pumpkin back to the mom. Back to the mom. We're gonna head right on back over. Since we're in control here. Here's your minion. Oh, hold on. There we go. Here's your minion. My baby! Mommy! Oh, it's a reunion. <laughs> Thank you, um... Graham. Thank you, Graham. Here, take this. Maybe this useless trinket ahead of this will be of some use to you. So if you're right for not enabling me to protect my kids. The pumpkin hands you a gold brooch with a beautiful blue sapphire. Fucking sweet. Is there anything more I can do for you? Me thirsty, mama. Now that you mention it. My baby is feeling a bit poorly. After all, living in a bowl ain't too good for your health, you know? No, I did not know that. What would make your baby feel better? Fresh water, naturally. Of course. Not too sweet, though. In fact, the more bitter, the better. My children are very particular about what they drink. I will see what I can do. And thus, we now set out on a quest to... Well, bring the pumpkin their water. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and we can do some of that. Easy enough. Easy enough indeed. We're going to go to the west here, and then we're going to go south. And funny thing. Keep keep going. Come on. Come on, Graham. Just, just going south. Get that one little inch. That one little millimeter, rather. This will be a good bittering Reach agent. Reach out and pluck a large, juicy-looking lemon from the tree. It is a lemon. Uh, and really quick, um, we did not look at... It is a simple clay bowl. That was the bowl that the pumpkin it was in earlier. Lemon. Its juice has a bitter taste. Mmm, that's what gives it away, does it not? Um, okay. We need to get some water. I say the closest fresh water source is going to be over this way. Now we're out in the wilderness again, so be, weary, be wary of the uh, enchanter type. I think that's actually him right there, is it not? Okay, maybe not. Let us get some agua. You fill the bowl with the fresh spring water. Let's get out of here. Where the, that tree looks out of place. <laughs> all right. And now we got to head kind of all the way back to the pumpkin. Hopefully without any issues. And before we get too far, we actually need to augment the water we have ever so slightly before I forget. Whoop. You cut the lemon with your sword and watch the juice run out. You squeeze the lemon. The spring water tastes... After using your sword to cut the lemon's surface, you squeeze some of its juice into the bowl. Then you discard the lemon. Man, there's some good eating on that lemon, man. What the hell? I was just kidding. All right. As we're making our way back to the pumpkin, this is a pumpkin. Okay. 
Here you go, we won. You pour the bitter water over the baby pumpkin. It seems to like that. <laughs> Thank you again, Graham. Here, take this. The pumpkin nice. reaches into her head and pulls out a candle, which she then hands to you. That thing has been jammed in my head for as long as I can remember. I know it ain't much, but maybe you'll find some use for it. Thank you. Don't mention it. Besides, it's really hard for me to sleep with that thing lit up inside my head all night. A word of warning. Hagatha has been talking about you. I heard her mention your name while she was muttering to herself. She does that when she's inspected her variables. Anyway, I'd stay clear out of her way if I were you. I appreciate the advice. Will Hagatha not be angered when she discovers you've given your candle away? What's she gonna do? Turn it into a pumpkin? Good point. Besides, I could just blame the dwarf. He's earned himself a bad reputation from the day he moved here. Pity no one can catch him, not even Hagatha. Hmm. If I may ask... Appreciate all you've done, Graham. But I want to spend some quality time with my children. Now be a good boy and run some <laughs> other errands. Fine. The small pond is a beautiful feature in this part of the forest. You imagine a variety of bird life would find this a very suitable place to travel for the breeding season. Mm, breeding, okay. A beautiful, majestic white swan gracefully glides across the lake. What an adorable baby swan. Oh my god. Well, let's keep moving and keep that in mind because we actually saw something of interest that we will be dealing with right now. We'll go down this way. We'll do it one more time. And then we're going to go ahead over here, grab our net. You walk into position and try to catch the baby bird. Hey, little guy. Dinner time. You throw the net over the pond. Just and the baby kidding. bird is caught unharmed. Let's take a look at him. It is a baby bird, and not a terribly pretty one at that. Oh, is it an ugly duckling? So what should we do with the ugly duckling? Well, let's go ahead and head back this way. And do what we should be doing. Returning the ugly duckling back to where the ugly duckling belongs. Again, the whole your whole understanding of knowing children's fairy tales is kind of paramount to making this you game easier to play. Bird into the pond. <laughs> In a way. Oh yeah. The ugly duckling conformed. <laughs> oh no. You pick up the white feather and put it carefully away. Fucking sweet. Let's go and uh, take a look at our candle. The candle is unlit. It is a swan feather of the purest white you have ever seen. Damn! All right, let's make some tracks here. Because now we need to kind of get to the next big chunk of, of information. We've collected a lot of kind of things that we can collect for the time being. Technically, there's a couple. Technically, there's a few more things we could also grab. But there's, again, we don't want to clutter our inventory too much. Um, because, yeah, the over cluttering can make, make the game a bit hard to remember what you have, where it is. So we're trying to avoid over cluttering. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's keep moving. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm going the right way. Pretty sure I am. I don't like you, tree. I don't trust you. Let's go this way. And we'll 
carefully cross the bridge. Come on. Oddly, the short path runs up to the mountain wall here, but leads nowhere else. Well, that can't be right. It probably feels like you get no And yet, holy crap! Incredible. The door you have discovered has taken on the appearance of a face. It is silent, however, and almost seems to be waiting for something. Uh. Uh, greetings. Here's a little cram. I am King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> Would you, by any chance, know of the way to a strange island on which stands a quartz tower in which a beautiful woman is being held captive? You feel more than a little foolish. Surely a door, even one with a face, would neither hear nor understand you. I am the door of destiny. Holy fuck! I am sought out by many, found by few, and opened by none so far. For indeed, only once can I be opened. Such is the magic that I am. Through me will you find the destiny you seek, if you cannot perform a task. Anything! You feel intense exuberance that you have come so close to your goal in such a short time. You must bring me the gems of nature. I beg your pardon? The stone door rumbles what, them a turd? within. For a time, <laughs> it says nothing. And then... Gems of three, I ask of thee to fetch, collect, and bring to me. In water shall you find the first, though not the type to quench your thirst. Spy the second high in the sky, with wings or no, thou still must fly. Through swampy mire, so it is heard, in lone dark castle lies the third. Should you succeed, my noble king, to your fair maiden, I will bring. I warn you, though, you should beware. A danger cloaked awaits you there. Without warning, the stony face falls silent. As you watch, it gradually smooths out to become the mountainside face once more. You notice that, within the door, three shallow indentations have sunk into the rock's surface. Presumably, the three gems of nature must fit here. Now all you have to do is find them. How did that poem go again? <laughs> well, luckily for us, we should have a pretty solid idea about how to go about it. Okay. A piece of a piece of paper has blown here in the wind. What could this be? You're not close enough. Never close enough. Story of my life. The paper is torn and dirty. It looks like a flyer of some sort. You smooth out the torn and tattered paper and read, Curios I have to the town do come, awaiting I am. Mm. So straight up, we just got to go back to town. Now let's see, because there, in order for us to kind of move forward, there's a few things we got to do. This path will lead us straight back to the town. So we've seen a lot from talking pumpkins to uh, color changing swan babies to a rock that likes to rhyme. <laughs> Perhaps he wants to rock and roll. Oh, okay, that. But we have a few final things we can deal with um, before we actually take the information that was given to us from Mr. Stoneface. Greetings again, merchant. Yes, many greetings. Need you have now for my wares of great specialty? A poo? What wares do you sell, good merchant? For yourself, behold them. You look over the merchant's wares of great specialty 
and quickly reevaluate them as <laughs> junk. You seem to have quite a selection of, well, quite a selection. A keen eye have you. In an item or two, provoke interest, I might? A daunting task. Uh, uh, rather, by all means. This I had. You appraise the object he holds up to you. It is a simple shell, intricately fashioned into the shape of a cone. The workmanship is unlike anything you have ever seen. Fascinating. Where did you find such a thing? Oh, old it is. From ancient times descends. Valuable, without question. Royal property, former, to be sure. You consider his story. Then you begin wondering which beach he found it on. <laughs> Uh, what else can you tell me? If I were to, say, purchase the shell, what would it cost? A trifle would you expend seven golds. I fear that I did not bring any money. Curiosity, I find, in one who travels but with nothing to barter brings. Good point. Might you trade the shell comb for something? The merchant ponders over this for a moment. Of value, many things are. A fancy, only one I have. And that is? Pearls. From curiosity, have you knowledge of the speaking pumpkin that once sat here? Misplaced it has become. Speaking pumpkin? Oh, uh, that. Uh, no, I do not see it anywhere. Sorry. So really quick, let's go ahead and... Is this yours? Ah, keen eyes you have. For that... A reward shall you receive. And that would be? The pleasure you will have in doing business with me. That gets it out of our inventory. Let's grab the poil. Would you be interested in this pearl? Indeed, I would. In return, the shell I present to you. May you be always groomed well. The merchant grabs the pearl and tosses the shell comb to you. Then he saunters off. History will decide how greatly you were just swindled. <laughs> oh, what a beauty. This will be worth a fortune back home. Is he Australian? All right, mate. See you later. So thus we get this beautiful how ingenious. Shell comb. It's a shell which has been intricately fashioned into something resembling a comb. All right. So We've explored a bunch of the town. Let's see what else maybe we can find out from the library. Yes? Could you recommend another good book? There! And we will take a look at it. This book is entitled, Way Below Your League, A Look at Sentient Aquatic Life. Browsing through it, you notice an mm. interesting excerpt. Way Below Your League, A Look at Sentient Aquatic Life. Wish to explore the sea? Good luck. Even the most accomplished swimmers cannot swim very far before they tire or are pulled underwater by the currents. Even with a ship, it is difficult to properly explore beneath the surface without some means of breathing underwater. Truly, only the Mer people have ever been known to offer aid in this regard. Though the relationship between the land dwellers and their marine counterparts has been somewhat strained over the years, it is said that the Mer people, in particular their leader King Neptune, can appreciate can appraise an individual quite accurately. In fact, they seem to possess a natural ability to sense whether a person intends hostility towards them or not. Fortunately for the would-be adventurers. For the would-be adventurer to their underwater kingdom, they are a peaceful people, not prone to unwarranted acts of violence. The Mer people's nature is sharp, in sharp contrast to that of their neighbors, the Sharkies. Oh God, the Sharkies, who live in seclusion in the deeper, darker waters of the ocean. Little is known about them except that they are fearsome to behold and do not take kindly to visitors. They are rumored to be excessively xenophobic and hence have avoided contact with most of the outside world. It can be assumed that tresp trespassers into their territory would be dealt with swiftly and harshly. And thus, that gives us the true foundations for what 
we need to do and where we need to go. It's a start. But there's a few things we need to do before we actually end up getting there. But with that said, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Jacktar Studios, Jacktar Studios for more live gaming action. Because when we come back, I don't I see. What is this? A bunch of shark people, more people, more under the sea. So we're going to have to see what we see under the sea. Thanks for stopping by, guys, and we'll see you guys next time.